I'm installing a power meter on my gravel bike, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few things. First of all, why I like using a power meter, why I like stages power meters, and finally, how do you fit a stages power meter on a bike that has the spindle attached to the non-drive side? First of all, why a power meter? Training with power is the best way to train if you're doing intervals. Now there's stuff all over the internet, so I'm not gonna go into much detail, but I'm gonna talk about why I like using a power meter for training. So when I'm doing my intervals, getting up to a certain level and holding it is really easy to do with a power meter versus heart rate. So I used heart rate monitors for years, but heart rate can fluctuate based on how hydrated you are, how fatigued your body is, and it also lags. So if you're starting an interval with a power meter, you know within like five seconds what your power is. So you can get right up to that really quickly. Heart rate can lag up to a minute. But just as important as getting your power up to a certain level for an interval, I think using power is very useful on the rest days, so when you shouldn't be going too hard. My interval season doesn't really start to the summer, and that's when I'm training for the fall race series. But on those days when I'm going easy, so in the summer, I'm either typically going really hard or going easy. And those easy days are either zone one or zone two, and I find that if I don't really use a power meter, I end up going too hard. And so using a power meter helps me hold back and not go above like, you know, 180, 200 watts. And that way I know I'm resting properly. Now I typically just use a power meter on my gravel bike. I don't road bike anymore. I gave that up. Having the Garmin on the gravel bike and being able to look down and monitor my power is a lot easier to do on a gravel bike. On a mountain bike, especially on the trails that I ride, the trails are twisting all over the place and it's just not practical to look at the Garmin and monitor your power. That's why I don't use a power meter on my mountain bikes. Would it be nice to have that data for rides? Yeah, sure, but I have like four mountain bikes and putting a power meter on every single mountain bike that I own or you know even one or two, it's, it's just, it's not practical for me. That's why I, I love having it on the gravel bike. Uh, again, it just helps me do my intervals because if I'm doing intervals, unless I'm doing like a off-road, you know, mountain bike time trial, uh, my intervals are on my gravel bike. Now, why stages power meters? I like the ones that don't use pedals because I am always using SPD style pedals, so Shimano SPD, and I just haven't found a power meter that's SPD compatible. They're typically all road bike uh, compatible pedals. I could be wrong. Uh, but being able to use any pedal that I want is why I like stages. So you're just using the crank arm. And I don't want to use the kind that's kind of built into the crank set just because they're so expensive. I think stages power meters are priced really well. They fit into my budget. And finally, I'll talk about how you fit a stages power meter on a bike where you have the spindle attached to the non-drive side crank arm like the Easton EA90 also, a lot of SRAM cranks are like that. So what you have to do is you have to get a spindle from Stages, and they have various size spindles. And I'll talk about the one that fit my Niner RLT9 RDO with this Easton EA90 crank set. Stages has a chart on their website where you look at the crank set and match the spindle. It's like A, B, C, D, or E and you match it to your crank set. Now the Easton EA90 is I think fairly new on the market. Uh, at least they didn't have it on Stages website. And I had a conversation with Stages and we actually tried two different size spindles. So the first one that I tried was spindle E and that was actually too wide. So I ended up with spindle C and it worked very well. Before I talk about fitting that power meter on my Niner RLT9, let me just say that Stages does include various spacers. So you get the wavy washer, you get a couple different spacers, and then you also get some threads. Now why the threads? So this Easton EA90 crank set, this preload adjuster, which you can twist off, when you get that off, sometimes that will, the whole thing will come off, the threads and everything. With this crank arm, the threads actually stay onto the spindle. And so I think it's really cool that Stages includes these threads. So you can use the preload adjuster, so you thread it off and then put the threads on the new spindle, the stages spindle, and that way you can thread your preload adjuster on. Now, if you have a SRAM crank set, 
this whole preload adjuster will come off so you may not need these threads. So putting this on a bike is really just a matter of removing the crank set. So the crank set's where the spindle is attached to the non-drive side. You would simply remove the bolt from the drive side, remove the drive side crank arm from the bike, and then you would either use your hand or a soft rubber mallet to tap out the spindle and that would remove the crank set from the bottom bracket. Then you would take the stage of spindle, attach it to the power meter, which is the left crank arm, and then tighten it to the proper torque specs, which stages says is 50 Newton meters. Here's a tip. After you remove the drive side crank arm, before you tap out the old spindle, look and see how much threads are sticking out. In other words, how much of the splines are sticking out. Take a picture of it with your phone because when you put in the new spindle, you wanna make sure the spacing is the same as the old spindle. So on this bike, which again is a Niner RLT9 RDO, I did not have to use any spacers. I tried the preload and I did not have enough splines extending from the bottom bracket on the drive side. So there's no preload, no wavy washer, no additional spacers. All I did was attach the spindle to the stage's power meter, push this through the bottom bracket and then attach the drive side. And by the way, most of the time printed on the cap of the drive side will be your torque specs. So that will wrap up this video, which again is just a discussion on power meters and then some tips on fitting a stages power meter to your bike. And it's pretty obvious, but I just wanna mention that if your crank set has the spindle attached to the drive side, you're not gonna to have to buy that spindle from stages, you just buy the power meter, in other words, the left crank arm. In fact, you don't even have to remove the spindle and drive side from your bike. You just undo the cap that holds the left crank arm onto the spindle and then put some grease on it and install the stages power meter. As always, questions or comments, drop those below. Thanks for watching.